Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another weekend prep video. It is currently Saturday morning about 9 a.m. I'm in the drive-thru at Starbucks getting myself an almond milk flat white. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Jen. I am a full-time working mom and in these videos, I just like to share with you what I try to get done on the weekend to prepare for the upcoming work week. So today I'm going to go down to the farmer's market. I'm hoping to get some tomatoes because I would like to make some homemade marinara sauce. I have some basil on my back back deck and I think that would be uh, perfect to freeze and I also need to run to the grocery store this morning. Adam and I are actually going to a local event called October Fest, which is like kind of like a beer and food truck event down at the riverfront so I'll show you that and then I have a lasagna to deliver this afternoon for lasagna love and then tomorrow I really just need to get some things done around the house I have a lot of things I need to organize so I'm gonna be choosing uh, what to do <laughs> there because I'm not gonna be able to do it all probably gonna get groceries this weekend do some meal prep and some cooking so come along with me and we will see what we can get done You guys know that I'm normally not a huge breakfast eater, so this morning I brought a Built Bar with me. They are sponsoring today's video, so thank you to them. This week I am trying the new Cookie Dough Chunk Bar, which is fantastic. If you haven't tried it, it's delicious. I highly recommend it. This is one of their newer flavors, and if you haven't yet, make sure you follow them on social media because they are always releasing new flavors, and you can get notified of them there. But this particular bar has only 100. 50 calories and only six grams of sugar which is awesome because I am watching my sugar right now I also brought this one to show you guys because these are really delicious too I ordered these actually with my own coupon code these are the built bar puffs they taste like a chocolate marshmallow bunny I'm not even kidding but anyway I've been working with built bar for quite some time I love their products I use them not only for a breakfast when I'm not wanting like a full meal but I also like to have them as snacks throughout the day in the afternoon like if I get a sweet craving they're awesome for that and also they're good to keep in my bag while I'm traveling so if you guys want to check out Built Bar I'll have a link in the description box below you can get 10% off your first order the code is GenShapen10 yes I just used my own code last week to order some of these puffs so get on that uh, get on their site and see what flavors you would like I am going to grab my coffee and then I'm gonna take you to the farmers market with me all right, so I'm here downtown, and this is just our small farmer's market here. I live in a town of about 23,000 people, so not a huge place. But, you know, I do feel grateful that at least we have this, because I know a lot of towns don't have one. So let's go see what they have. Let's see if I can find some to me. We've got pumpkins, green ones, yellow ones, orange ones, white ones. Pretty. So I finished up at the farmer's market. I went to the post office to check my P.O. box. So hopefully I can share some things that I got with you guys in this video at some point. And then I went to Fairway and grabbed the rest of the stuff I needed for the lasagna. So now I'm gonna go home and get ready for the Oktoberfest thing and hopefully assemble a lasagna this morning. <laughs> All right, so we are back from our October brew fest and I got a little crispy sunburn on my face, which is weird because I did put sunscreen on before we left. But anyway, I'm gonna put together this lasagna so we can deliver it. So I'm actually gonna try these Barilla Oven Ready noodles. I haven't used these in a long time and they were on sale in the store the other day, so I figured why not? So I've got a disposable container here. I did ask the recipient what they wanted. I always ask when I volunteer for Lasagna Love if they want lasagna baked or cold Cold so they can bake it themselves. So I put some sauce in the bottom of here, three of the noodles. I actually made the marinara sauce last night, so that was already in the fridge ready to go. I've got some mozzarella cheese, the rest of my noodles, and then I have some ricotta, cottage cheese, one egg, some parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning. So I'm just gonna go ahead and layer this up and be ready to go. All 
All right, so this is ready to go. Adam's gonna drive me to deliver this, and then when I get home, I'm gonna make dinner. I'm actually just gonna use the remainder of the marinara to make spaghetti for dinner. All right, so we are back. I'm gonna make dinner. So I have a couple different kinds of pasta I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use this regular spaghetti. I get this from Thrive Market. It's really, really good, like high quality pasta. Probably gonna cook up half of this for the fam. And then for myself, I'm gonna try this jovial grain-free pasta. This is actually paleo, so that should be interesting. And I need a little bit more sauce because I used a little bit more than half when I made that lasagna, so I don't think I'm gonna have quite enough. So I'm just gonna add half a jar just because I don't wanna thin it out too much. And I'll heat this up for sauce, and then I think I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna sew. No, I'm not gonna sew. I'm gonna see if I have some veggies in the fridge to make a salad with. All right, so my water is boiling. I'm gonna salt it very, very well. And then I have about half of this. It's a little over a pound, that box is. And if I make a whole a pound of spaghetti, it's way too much for the four of us, especially if we have salad and garlic bread and stuff. So I'm gonna boil this for about 10 minutes and then I have a separate pot back here for my gluten-free, whatever, grain-free pasta. I've never tried this before, so I'm looking forward to trying it. I got a couple of different shapes of the pasta. This one is obviously spaghetti, but it's made from cassava flour. So yeah, I'm looking forward to trying it. Okay, so I'm gonna make some garlic bread. This is actually a loaf of homemade Hawaiian bread that I bought at the farmer's market today. So I thought that would be kind of different and good to make some garlic bread with. So I have some butter in here. I'm just gonna salt this a little bit. I melted it in the microwave. I'm gonna add some Italian seasoning. Then, I don't know, maybe about three cloves worth of garlic and mix this up. Super easy to make garlic bread like this with any bread that you have on hand and it turns out really good. I normally just bake this in the oven, I don't know, like 450 for, you know, 10 minutes until it's nice and brown. And if you end up with extra of this butter, you can just stick it back in the fridge and next time you wanna make garlic bread, just pull it out and re-melt it. I've done this before with leftover buns too. If you have like leftover sub rolls or ciabatta rolls are really good, you can make garlic bread with that too. Okay, I'm gonna stick this in the oven. All right, so I was gonna make salad, but <laughs> we just got back from our getaway little weekend vacation type thing a couple days ago and I thought I had some romaine in the fridge still that would be good, but alas, it is slimy, so. I had to toss that so instead I'm just gonna make some like raw veggies and dip so I got these little cherry tomatoes at the farmer's market as well I'm gonna wash these up and then I think I'll just cut up like a cucumber I found a little bit of a cucumber that's still good and a pepper so I'll cut this up Okay, so after the garlic bread was in the oven for about, I don't know, six, seven minutes, I broiled it for a few minutes, so it makes it nice and crispy on top, delicious. Another tip I have for you if you're making spaghetti, spaghetti dinner, or any kind of pasta dinner really, is to undercook your spaghetti a little bit, and while you're finishing like everything else in your dinner, just let it sit here in the hot water and it will finish cooking. It's not gonna be mushy or anything, but it will help it from sticking together and it will keep it warm. All right, so here's Adam's plate. I'm gonna put some Parmesan cheese on there. And we got veggies here too, tomatoes cucumbers and peppers. All right, good Sunday morning. We are getting started with some iced coffee this morning. I actually got up at a decent time this morning to get some things done today. So I'm starting out with some ice in my cup and I'm just gonna pour in some of this cold brew. I've never had this brand before. I purchased it this time. It's called Busy. I don't know, I got it at Hy-Vee. It's pretty good. Then now I'm going to get working on breakfast as well. So Adam requested bacon and eggs and toast for breakfast. So this was some of the bacon we had left over from our camping trip so I just fried that up crispy in a skillet 
I also reconstituted some of those Idaho hash browns, the ones that I get at Costco. They're really good. So I crisp those up in a skillet. I foamed up some almond milk creamer and uh, some sugar-free syrup. So I'm just pouring that over the cold brew. And that is how I make my not copycat Starbucks, but <laughs> it's still a decent tasting cold brew at home. So I had a couple slices left of that bread that I got at the farmer's market, which was delicious. I could definitely get in trouble with that bread if I had it in my house all the time, but I'm putting some butter on that. So we just have some bacon and eggs and hash browns and toast. Bon appetit. All right, so I need to get some errands done and go to the grocery store today, but the first thing that I need to do is clean up my kitchen. So I'm going to go ahead and load my dishwasher. So far, I am super happy with this Bosch dishwasher. However, I cannot say the same thing about my refrigerator <laughs> and my microwave. We ended up buying a Samsung fridge, which I'll talk a little bit about some of the issues that we're having it later in this video, but it's just, I feel like they just don't make appliances like they used to, but I have to say this Bosch dishwasher has been fabulous. And honestly, I have a Samsung stove and that has been fine as well. I feel like our parents' generation kept appliances for 30 years, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. Someone explained to me once that the way that they make appliances now with like the energy saving functions make them so that they don't last as long. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just something that I heard once. All right, so dishwasher is loaded up. I'm gonna put one of my tablets in there and get that started up. And then I also have some dishes that I needed to hand wash. So I put on my pink rubber gloves and got to work. If you need to wash a lot of dishes, I would definitely recommend using rubber gloves. It sounds silly, but you can get the water so much hotter and it just goes faster, I feel like. Also, I ended up giving my broiler pan that came with my stove to Goodwill because it was sitting in the bottom of my stove, like in the drawer part for so long that, and I was like, I've never used this before. I'm probably never gonna use this. So I went ahead and donated it did you guys keep yours? I don't know. I just feel like anytime I want to broil something like that or cook some, something in the oven like that, I always just use a, you know, a cooling rack on a sheet tray. Next up, I'm going to scrub out my sink because I am going to be doing some cooking and washing produce today. So I really like using the barkeeper's friend, like the cream scrub to scrub my sink out. And I use the round brushes from Grove Collaborative. I forget what they're called on their site. They're called like scrubber. I forget what they're called, but I think the brushes work super well. And I just scrub that out really well and then rinse it with super hot water. Next, I'm using one of these Glisten garbage disposal cleaners. These are the ones that come in the little packets and you just drop it down in there and turn it on while you're running super hot water. And I do really like these. My favorite ones are the CLR ones. Those are hard for me to find. So when I go to Menards, I usually try to <laughs> stock up, but these work just as well. Okay, so I also wanted to wipe down my faucet. Basically, I was just sort of inspired to clean my whole sink area. So I'm just wiping that down with a hot microfiber cloth. Next up, my stove was kind of a disaster. I didn't do like a deep clean of it, but I just wanted to wipe it down because I knew I was gonna be doing some cooking and I really cannot stand to cook in a dirty kitchen. So I'm just giving this a quick spray down with some multi-surface spray. I'm using the Pear multi-surface spray from Mrs. Myers. I really do like this scent and then I'm just gonna wipe that down with a really hot cloth and then I always finish it with some Windex because that helps give it that shine especially if you have a black stove top like I do it works really really well for the top of the stove that's stainless steel, I like to use the Wyman stainless steel cleaner. I also use this on my fridge and my microwave, basically anything I have that's stainless steel in my kitchen and it works great. All you have to do is spray it on and then I just kind of buff it on with a dry microfiber cloth. And as you can see, it shines everything up beautifully. All right, so stove is clean. I'm just gonna put that back together and then we will get on to the rest of our day. All right, so I finished cleaning up in the kitchen and I'm here at Aldi. I decided I'm gonna go here this week and try to get most of my groceries because I always know that I can save a lot of money by doing that and uh, I just haven't been here in a while. So I'm gonna run in. If I see anything cool, I'll share it with you guys. Okay, so these, I'm not gonna get these today, but I think these are newer at Aldi. I've never seen them here before. They're the Crepini Zero Net Carb Egg Wraps and these are the ones made with cauliflower. Well, Aldi has a mini salad spinner for $8.99. If you guys have tried this, 
let me know. I can't really tell from the box how good it would be. That's what it looks like inside. And then they have these spiralizers too. Actually, I have one of these and for nine bucks, it's actually a pretty good deal. They work pretty well. I think these are new. They're like the crackling wick candles. They have one that's citrus clove and another that's fireside and fig. They actually smell really good. All right, here's the fall stuff. So we got pumpkin cupcakes, hostess pumpkin cupcakes, chocolate pumpkins, caramel apple, is this coffee? Yeah, for the Keurig. Caramel apple creams, cookies, pumpkin face cream. These, oh man, pumpkin spice yogurt pretzels. They even have pumpkin spice almonds. That's kind of funny. And then they have sweet potato chips, cinnamon and brown sugar, and pumpkin cheesecake drizzled caramel corn. OMG. I'm not gonna buy that, but that looks delicious. Got more candles. Pumpkin cream cookie. Pumpkin cinnamon. Cedar oak wood. Smells like cologne, actually. Here's an apple one, too. Apple harvest. I think that person's probably wondering what I'm doing. All right, so I just, well, I didn't just get home from the store. I actually just got done filming a grocery haul, but I cooked some of these popcorn chicken that I got at Aldi for the kids for lunch, and there are some left. So we have leftovers of this. I just like to put it in Connor's lunch for the next day. So I have a little bento box here, so I'll just put those in there with some ketchup and then put some other things in there too. Here's the top this so probably some veggies fruit cheese cubes whatever the other thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and remove this produce drawer and soak it in some hot water because we've got some some kale and some different slimy slimy lettuce residue down there so i'm using this iowa pine scent even though this is not what iowa smells like i can assure you however this is one of my favorite mrs meyer scents and oh look it's leaking Oh, I'm gonna have to set it in the sink. Anyway, I really love this, and I know it's not Christmas time yet, but I'm using it anyway. Of course, I dumped water all down the front of my sink cabinet, but you know what? That's just an opportunity to clean it. All right, so we're gonna put lettuce in here. What else? Cucumber peppers. I feel like my produce drawers are an underutilized space in my fridge. I don't know why. All right, that'll be good enough for now. I need to clean out the other drawer. I think everything else in that drawer over there is still, is still pretty okay. One thing I have to say about this refrigerator, this is a Samsung. I think it's a fairly popular model or at least, at least I've seen a lot of other people have this fridge or similar. I cannot recommend this fridge whatsoever. We bought this, obviously when we built our house, we had never purchased a brand new refrigerator before, so we didn't really know kind of what we were doing. I didn't really look at reviews and there are a couple things that I don't like about it. So apparently there's like a drainage tube down in the back of there somewhere that if it's malfunctioning, it causes the this drawer to freeze to the bottom of the fridge and so about every 10 days I have to totally remove this whole thing out like chip all of the ice off the bottom of the refrigerator scoop it all out dry it and put the drawer back and we also had to replace this because the ice will freeze up in there it like freezes all together in a giant block and then when you go to dispense it the auger thing will turn in there and since the ice is all frozen together it'll bind up and it caused this to crack and so it's just it doesn't work like this like seriously this isn't even four years old yet and it's already like to the point where i'm like i want a new fridge i mean obviously it's like functioning and everything i should probably call a repair person and see if they can do anything with it i don't know it's just you know it's frustrating because i feel like when we were kids our parents had appliances for like 20 years right didn't they i mean i feel like refrigerators and washers and dryers and everything just like lasted forever and now they don't so i don't think i showed you guys but i got a bunch of tomatoes at the farmer's market yesterday so i think i'm gonna cook those up into some marinara sauce today i'm not gonna like properly can the marinara sauce because i just don't really <laughs> have time for fussing with all that today. I think I'm just gonna freeze it. But I wanted to do that. And then I also got these jalapenos, which partially I'm gonna use in the recipe and then partially I'm gonna use to make 
jalapeno poppers tonight. So I think I'll get these washed up right now. If you oh, look how cute these are. This is my little baby salad spinner, by the way. I love it. I swear to God, it takes me like five hours to get every single grocery item put away. I mean, I already have the cold, the cold stuff put away, but the rest of it is still like sitting out here on the couch. <laughs> I get distracted and I start doing other stuff. Anyway, I store my potatoes in the pantry. Make sure you store them separate from onions, but I just put them in this big bowl and then have these other two that were in there. So I put those on top, but these are gonna be for mashed potatoes, probably Tuesday night. Well, in a shocking turn of events, I do not have my cilantro that I thought I purchased at Aldi. So either it got lost between the store and my car or I don't know what happened, but I need cilantro for the chili I'm making tonight. So I need to run in here and grab that. All right, so I got my, got my cilantro that is washing as we speak. So the next thing I'm gonna do is prep these tomatoes so that I can make this marinara sauce. You need to peel them. So the easiest way to do that in my opinion is to roast them in the oven. You can also blanch them in boiling water and then shock them in ice water. That works too. But I think this method is much more like hands off because basically you just have to cut them in half. So I'm just cutting them in half and then cutting the cores out and just putting them face down on a baking tray. I lined it with foil just to make the cleanup a little bit easier. And then you can like roast these at, I think when I made the salsa, I roasted these at like 400, but you can also do it under the broiler, which I think is what I'm gonna do today. And then once they get done roasting, the skins will just like, once they cool, you can just like literally just take them right off. And I'll show you the recipe and I'll link it down below. I have a couple different recipes that I've used for homemade marinara sauce before. One is specifically for fresh tomatoes, which is this one that I'm using, and one is for canned San Marzano tomatoes, so I can show you that too. All right, so here are all my tomatoes. You can go ahead and crowd them on the sheet because obviously all you want to do is kind of blacken the skin. So this is super heavy. I'm not going to be able to pick this up <laughs> with one hand. This is like a double sheet tray, so I don't know how many tomatoes I have, but I used all but three that I bought at the farmer's market, so I'm going to go ahead and put these under the broiler now. I'm just going to set it for five minutes and check it every five minutes until the skins are dark. Okay, so I don't think I showed you guys what I'm doing for dinner tonight. So I am filming a fall sort of recipe crock pot video. And so I have some white chicken chili in here. And then in this one, I have some buffalo chicken dip. So there's gonna be leftovers, but that's what we're gonna have for dinner. I am also going to make some jalapeno poppers. So I have some jalapenos here. These are from the farmer's market. Some Neufchatel cream cheese and some bacon. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble these uh, right now and then I can bake them after the tomatoes are done. I'm gonna put some parchment paper in my casserole dish because I know from experience that that bacon cooks in there, it can be really hard to get out. So I kind of feel like I massacred some of these peppers because they were a little bit small and I used this jalapeno core that I have. So I'm trying to decide like for these, do I just, do I have them or I just, I think I'm just gonna leave them whole and then try to stuff a little bit of the cream cheese in there. And then since these are small jalapenos, I'll probably just use half a piece of bacon for each. I guess the bigger ones I can cut them in half, but yeah, that'll work. These that I got at the market are a lot smaller. The ones in the store that I usually get are like huge, but these also seem like they might be a little bit spicier. Obviously I haven't tasted one, but the smell, <laughs> they do uh, smell very spicy. Okay, so here are my jalapeno poppers. I just used a half a piece of bacon on each one and wrapped it around. So I'm gonna put these in the oven at 400 degrees. Normally they take about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how crisp you want the bacon. Okay, so here are what the tomatoes look like after I had them under the broiler for about 13 minutes. I'm gonna let these cool before I try to skin them, but I'm just gonna show you kind of how easily the skins can come off. 
All right, so I'm gonna make some homemade cornbread to go with our chili. So I'm just gonna use the recipe that's on the cornmeal container because that's what I have on hand. So I'm gonna do the wet ingredients in here. So I'm gonna need a quarter cup of vegetable oil, but I don't have any vegetable oil open right now. So I'm just gonna use melted butter, which will work just the same. And I'm also gonna need some egg and some milk. Actually, I can use this for the milk. It says one cup of milk. It says skim milk, but I have 2%, so it should be fine. Crack one egg in there and then whisk this up. Okay, so in this bowl, I've got some flour and some sugar, and I'm gonna put in three-fourths of a cup of cornmeal. And then I need two teaspoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so I'm gonna give the dry ingredients a whisk and then just slowly or not so slowly, <laughs> pour in the wet. All right, I'm gonna spray this. I'm not gonna line it with parchment paper. I might regret that, we'll see. This is a nine by nine dish. You can use an eight by eight dish if you have one. This says to bake for 20 to 25 minutes. All right, so everyone's gotten their plate, so I'm gonna go ahead and eat. Or here are the jalapeno poppers. They turned out super delicious, and I'm so glad I used that parchment paper because that will be such a cinch to wash. Here's the cornbread. I feel like it turned out a little bit dry. I don't know, if you guys have like a tried and true cornbread recipe from scratch, I would definitely take it. I mean, it's good cornbread. I just feel like I've had so much better you know, out at different places. Here's how the white chicken chili turned out. So you guys will be seeing this in a fall crock pot video. Delicious. And then the buffalo chicken dip. I kind of just made this for the video also, um, the fall crock pot video. But this buffalo chicken dip is actually really good leftover. I used to, like when I used to work in the office, I would take it to work and heat it back up. It's really good also as a filling in baked potatoes too, if you never tried that. So I'm sure Adam will eat this throughout the week for lunch or whatever. All right, so I told Connor that I would play connect four with him that's one of his favorite games to play so i just want to play that with him before he takes a shower but i'm gonna go ahead and get some of these apples washed up i'm still kind of cleaning up the kitchen from dinner a little bit i still have tomorrow to kind of get ready to leave for the week so i know there was some food stuff that i wanted to do for adam and the kids but i can always get that done tomorrow also all right next up strawberries this is my big salad spinner. If you guys want to see the difference between the little salad spinner and the big salad spinner, I can't really show you. But I would say it's maybe about a half to a third of the size. I highly recommend both, actually. But, you know, I know that there are people that have limited room in their kitchen. So if that's you, I would recommend getting the big one if you can only get one. But I really like having the little one too because I think it's just easier to clean. Nice to have for like herbs and small batches of things. But I'm gonna soak these strawberries in vinegar water for 10 or 15 minutes and then I'll rinse them off and cut them up and get them in the fridge. So it's getting, it's getting a little bit late here. And it's like, I'm already pot committed to doing this marinara sauce, so I have no choice but to finish it. So I still need to show you guys the recipe for this. So I need, for the recipe as written, I need 12 cups of tomatoes, which I might actually have more than that, we'll see. But I am gonna just kind of squeeze the seeds out of these. Obviously the skins are super easy to remove. What we're gonna do actually is cook down this marinara sauce because fresh tomatoes have a lot of water and so you wanna concentrate that flavor when you're making the marinara sauce, obviously. I don't get out 100% of the seeds. I just try to get out as many as I can. Somebody was saying, oh, last time I made salsa, someone was saying that they save the peels, the tomato peels, and then they dry them out in the oven and then grind them up and use it as like a seasoning for like vegetable soup and stuff, which I thought was super interesting. I don't think I'm gonna do that today, but I might try to do it sometime when I have more time. Haha, -ha. when do I ever have more time? Never. I was talking to a friend, a little texting a friend on the phone today. And she's like, I don't know how you have time to do all the things you do. I'm like, well, my kids are older now, so that's part of it. I don't have, you know, babies and toddlers anymore, so they don't need as much of my time as they once did. Although when they were babies and toddlers, I was also in grad school. But, you know, when I was in school, I did a lot of that when they were in bed at night because you know when they're when they're younger they go to bed earlier so that was helpful too and i think it's important to say also that i think a lot of times you know you watch people online or 
on TV or where you know wherever and you always just assume that people are doing everything by themselves and that's just totally not true. I mean, obviously I'm not a single mom. I have a husband, I have a partner. You know, I have someone that helps me clean my house. We have family. You know, I have someone that helps me edit my videos and stuff like that and helps me like, you know, plan out my videos and my content calendar and things like that. So I don't, I just feel like it's important to say sometimes like if I ever give you the illusion that I'm doing it all myself, it's totally, that's totally not true. Totally not true. All right, so I'm gonna get these onions cut up for the marinara sauce. Um, I'm gonna try to cut these just as small as possible because I don't really like big chunks in there, but I might also end up pureeing the sauce a little bit. All right, so we got our onion in here with some olive oil, so I'm just gonna saute this slowly until it's caramelized. All right, so I added my garlic and about two tablespoons of dried herbs. We are gonna add some fresh basil at the end, but for fresh herbs, I don't like to add those until the end, because I feel like if you cook them, they just disintegrate. Okay, so I added a half a cup of dry red wine, and I'm just gonna let that reduce for a couple of minutes, and then I'll add the tomatoes. Okay, so I added in my tomatoes. I did end up with about 12 cups. That was a ton of tomatoes too, so I thought I was gonna have more. But anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and cook these down for a couple of hours. The longer that you can slow simmer it, the more concentrated the flavor will be. And once these start to cook down, like right now it looks super chunky, but obviously once they start to cook down, they'll disintegrate. And then I do usually end up pureeing it a bit with a an immersion blender at the end. So these are the two recipes I was telling you guys about for the tomato sauces that I use. So this recipe uses canned San Marzano tomatoes, which you can get in huge cans at Costco. If you're ever interested in making that homemade, this recipe is from a simplepalette.com and I've made this before, it's really good. This is the one that I use and I can try and link it down below when I do fresh tomatoes. It's from Former Chef and it's just called Basic Marinara Sauce. I've used this for years years and years and it works great i usually use fresh herbs if i have them i'm using a combination of dried and fresh today just because that's what i have but if you don't have fresh herbs you can totally use dried but especially if you have a garden too it's a great way to use tomatoes and like i said i have never personally properly like jarred and canned tomato sauce before it's something i want to do at some point but with this batch i'll probably just go ahead and freeze it i don't know about you guys but i literally cannot stand having a bunch of like packaging in my freezer and whatever and <laughs> pantry so whatever I have like grocery day there's always a ton of cardboard that I have to recycle I just I try to always take everything out of the package before I either put it in the pantry or the freezer all right so I did not have a ton of laundry to do this weekend because I got a lot of it done Friday evening but I do have some that I have in the dryer here I need to get out and fold. And then I told Kira to go ahead and put her dirty clothes in the washer when she gets done in the shower. And then I can combine that with the rest of our stuff and hopefully get everything taken care of for the week. So I washed my Converse last week. I don't really think it did anything to them, but maybe a little bit. I don't know. I have this broccoli that I need to get washed up to have for some type of dinner situation this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off the stems. I think I actually bought this last week because I was gonna make chicken and broccoli Alfredo lasagna, but I never got to it. So I'll probably just steam this up for dinner some night this week, but at least if I have it cut up, it'll take up less room in the fridge and it'll be already prepped. Okay, so I'm about ready to finish up my marinara sauce. I went out on the deck and grabbed some of my basil. I haven't picked any for quite a while, so I feel like these stems are pretty thick. And some of the leaves are a little bit questionable, but I'm just gonna kind of pull all of the leaves off that are good and then cut this up. And then I'm gonna puree the tomato sauce. It has reduced quite a bit and just stir in the chopped basil. Smells really good. So we want to make caprese salad. 
All right, so I'm pureeing the marinara sauce. This is a Cuisinart Smart Stick Immersion Blender. They don't exactly sell this particular one anymore, but I will link something similar down below. I would definitely recommend it. This is around $30, and I think it's a, a really great, honestly, investment for your kitchen. It can like puree soups, potatoes, whatever. So I'm just gonna zhuzh this a little bit more, and then I'll stir my basil in. All right, so last step, I'm just stirring in some freshly chopped basil and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a taste and see if it needs any more seasoning. All right, so I'm not gonna can this because like I said, I don't, I don't have time to deal with that right now. So I'm just gonna kind of put this into containers and refrigerate slash freeze it. It will keep in the refrigerator for about a week, but if you're gonna keep it longer than that, just freeze it and you can freeze it in mason jars also. You just have to make sure that you leave enough headspace for it to expand. I would say like maybe an inch or so. And also don't freeze it while it's hot. Put it in the fridge first, let it cool off, and then freeze it. Okay, so here is what I got out of that batch of marinara sauce. So take home, is it cheaper than buying it at the store? No, it's more expensive because that 12 cups of tomatoes cost me around $20 because it was around a dollar a tomato. Now I feel like in the heat of summer, you could probably get them a little bit cheaper, but basically I got four jars of marinara sauce. I had to buy the tomatoes, you know, onions, olive oil, what, like all that stuff. But honestly, this is really delicious. Like it's probably better than any marinara sauce that you can buy <laughs> basically. So I'm gonna stick this in the fridge and let it chill. And then I'll probably leave one in there just to use up throughout the week and then the rest of it I'll put in the freezer and save for later. All right, so that is gonna be it for this week's weekend prep video. Thanks you guys so much for following along with me this weekend and getting things done. I hope that you were inspired to get some things done around your own home. Don't forget to check out Built Bar. I'll have that link in the description box below. You can use code GenChapin10 to get 10% off your first order. Thanks again for your support and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.